Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included in the Ultimate Base 3.0. We ended the previous episode by hooking up the cool slush geyser. That means we're now done with this part, it is time to close this off again and keep the temperatures apart. In the previous episode I also realized that my plan was wrong with the bomb lilies, they are only for the normal Dracos, I mentioned it again, we should use mealwood or bristle blossoms to feed them. With the amount of dirt we currently have, we're gonna go with mealwood in the foreseeable future, might change to bristle blossoms that are gonna require polluted water. With that out of the way, I think we can uproot two plants, we're just gonna leave the one here be, and per glossy draco we get, we're gonna add one plant. Since my plan with first storing the gases here and then putting them into the chamber kind of failed, I might use the chlorine for our future food storage, and instead we're only gonna pump in the hydrogen and then just pump out all excess oxygen we currently have in there. So this gas pump can now go, yeah all of that actually can go. I'm also gonna remove the shearing station temporarily so we can set up the gas pump here at the bottom since hydrogen is gonna accumulate at the top. There's my new gas pumping setup, I would like to control this with a switch. Actually let's put it here so we can use less cabling. Connect you and this should also be connected to some power. You know what, I realized we can also use carbon dioxide for the plants. I kind of find this more satisfying and have the oxygen outside. That means I'm still gonna end up pumping out the room first and then filling it with the necessary gases. We can take some carbon dioxide from here for instance. Or maybe even easier, we set up a pump here at the bottom which is full of carbon dioxide and it's pure. Ooh, actually it is not quite pure, there's some polluted oxygen. So if we put this a little bit over, we shouldn't run the risk of picking that up. And then we just bring this all the way up, in the end this can be removed again. As for my two geysers, I would like to start collecting the liquids. Now we have these two lines going all the way down to here and my thinking is I first want to store a whole bunch of it as a buffer and then we send it into a system located here in order to interact with the steam vent. Maybe we're willing to expand the contraption all the way to here, adjacent to our ladder shaft. We then have the space for three liquid reservoirs. I'm not so sure, maybe I still want the ability to maintain everything with a ladder here. This way I also have the space for a couple of sensors if I want to install them. And then we can have a secondary layer with another two reservoirs that are going to be responsible for the secondary liquid. Pump is built, it's going to start to pump out this room as we do other things. And I guess these meal lies I'm just going to compost for now. I set up the gas pump down here with another signal switch so it's not actually going for it before I wanted to. So here we go, the second set of reservoirs. Now we also know how we could route our piping. One thing that is sure is we're gonna daisy chain both of these. So the staircase pattern here is already clear. Also we come out of here and check the temperature with a sensor. Then I guess as of this point we're gonna route them somewhat differently. This one is gonna come in here. We're still using igneous rock thankfully and this one is gonna come in here. You know maybe we're just gonna do it like so and hop over. I think this is gonna look tidier. Great we just placed the last pumps. Initially we should check that only the liquids we want are flowing in. Now before I actually start to fill up the reservoirs I would like to have them in a vacuum so I don't unnecessarily use the chill to cool down the environment down here. So we might want to finish the insulating layer and think about where we enter the contraption as a whole. I think what I want to do is set up a temporary liquid lock here. In the end I'm gonna close off the room once I'm certain that it actually functions. So that is gonna be our lock and we just access it with a ladder. Gonna have my bottle emptier right there. We then want to add all the functionality to this room before we close it off and actually then we need to open up the steam room and make this a separate chamber. Steam comes out at 110 degrees. If we pump this out with a liquid pump at 75 overheat temperature, we just have to switch to gold amalgam in order to increase that by 50 degrees, so 125. We don't even have to use steel for this contraption. This is gonna be very early game. Another printing pot opportunity for us and there's just something I saw. Rocketry plus 10 piloting and starry eyed, which gives us a plus 10 morale boost in space. Ellie's like the perfect dupe to just remain in space, do some exploration. I think I have to go for this opportunity, even though I didn't want to accept another duplicate just yet. But here we are, I'm not sure when there's gonna be another duplicate like Ellie. Ellie does snore loudly, I believe if we put her far enough away, then this should be alright. 
and we also need to increase our farms. As usual, I'm gonna have two spare ones. We also need to put her into a schedule. I think I'm gonna do the last one here, Ellie. In terms of priorities, she's definitely gonna do the rocketry stuff and then I'm just gonna enable her whenever I think something needs to be done. For now, I think she can help out with toggling and maybe storing. I mean, she's gonna be slow in the beginning. I don't really want her to go too far off. So maybe even storing is bad, but she's gonna train her athletics until we actually dive into the rocketry program, no problem. In terms of automation, we want to kick things off with a pipe thermo sensor that we're gonna place here. Let's do everything out of copper right now. And right next to it, we're gonna need a liquid shut off, something like that. If we reach the desired temperature, we want to leave the area this way with a little bridge. And if the temperature is still, in this case, too cold, we want to go into the cooling loop, which is gonna go up there. We do the same thing with the other liquid. One pipe is gonna go out and the other one is gonna join the cooling loop, whatever we do with it. So right now I'm guessing we're just gonna move over. Right here, of course, we have to switch things up a little bit. For instance, we would like to see a bridge here and a bridge there. And this way we can avoid both. And this is gonna be our output for the liquids with the correct temperatures. I'm gonna have a third output eventually here on the top and that is gonna be the normal water at the desired temperature. Though I have to say I cannot really exit here conveniently. That is a bummer. So maybe let's forget about this output and instead we're gonna do it at the bottom. So this is gonna be our water output. Ellie of course also earned a skill point. We should not forget about that. She's gonna get into rocketry even though, well, that was probably a mistake. It's not the most important thing to do right now. But my thinking was to get her the exosuit training as soon as possible. That way she's gonna be much faster while wearing it. I just realized the cool steam vent is dormant, so that means 19.3 cycles is the amount of time we have to finish the contraption. It is a lot of cycles, it should be enough, but I still want to be aware of it. But since this guy is dormant, we might want to open it up and already get started with the planning phase here. We want enough space for two sensors. One is gonna determine the temperature and then the other one is gonna determine how much liquid we have in there. So, and only if both conditions are true, then we want to continue. And that would be the ant gate we haven't researched yet. Let's search for that. And, oh, come on. Well, that search was a downer. Let's just go all the way down to computers. Right here we have it, the AND gate in advanced automation. But of course we want both conditions to be true. Right temperature, correct amount of liquid. And so that's how it's gonna go. I'm also gonna do the wallpaper right away because later on we will not be able to get into this room any longer. And we of course also want to have enough space for a pump that's gonna go here. Let's maybe set this up already. Also, don't forget to build this out of gold amalgam because of the temperatures. Some machines such as the thermal sensor do not have an overheat temperature but they have a melting point so that's the only thing you have to be aware of. You know, I just realized the liquid shutoffs can also overheat, so we either place them somewhere else, or we still keep the liquid reservoir room under pressure. Yeah, we could go with an easy gas such as carbon dioxide, even though it doesn't transfer much heat, but that might even be better. I just want to make sure that the shutoffs don't overheat eventually. It takes a really long time, even in a vacuum. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead, let the duplicants build a few things. We also might want to take apart a couple of walls here, so we can then all together pump out the room we end up with, which is probably gonna look something like this. Research is completed, good job. We're gonna add the AND gate right away. There are two inputs and one output, obviously. Let's get that thermo sensor hooked up to the first slot right there and the hydro sensor to the second slot. The output then is gonna connect to the pump and if both inputs are correct, then the pump is gonna activate. I think I then wanna make the steam room much larger so it encompasses all of that. We then wanna switch to radiant pipes. Let's see, what has the best conductivity? If we put some gold, iron and copper next to each other, actually we should probably go for the steel if we want the most exchange. We have 120 with the gold, but much less heat capacity than with the iron, where we have 110 and 0.4. Much less heat capacity with the gold. Steel on the other side isn't doing that well either. I think I'm just gonna go with iron. Iron in the future is also gonna be renewable, so it's probably not a bad idea to go for it. I also need to think about how I'm gonna make my way back to the reservoir. Maybe we should mirror everything. You know what? This is actually a good idea. Let me get rid of the entire thing and I'm gonna just mirror it. 
That way I think I'm gonna have an easier time routing everything. And of course we are not under pressure here. Still 18 cycles. Alright, I'm gonna be right back. Okay, we got the room sealed off from the outside and as promised I switched everything. Now we're gonna get one liquid through this input, the other liquid is gonna go through here. Filling up these tanks which are daisy chained into the other direction and just everything mirrored. The nice temperature output is gonna be here on the left side. And if we don't have the right temperature it's gonna go through the loop here and we need to find a solution to cool down the entirety of this room. Same thing happens for the lower part, we hop over here into the input. We then go into the second reservoir just to have a little bit more space. You could just do it with one if you wanted to. Then through the contraption, if we have the nice temperature, we go out to the left side and otherwise we join with the cooling situation here. We're gonna use iron for the radiant pipes and how could we do this in a convenient way? We wanna cover as much space as possible, especially in the lower parts. We still need to leave a little bit free in order to pump out the liquid. Though we could go out towards the side, leave the space free. For the pipe here on the left side, I think it might be easier. We just wiggle down, something like that, and then we can get out at this point again. Yeah, that's actually fairly easy and straightforward. We can join this pipe to fill up the initial tank again. We still have to control the overflow situation that might occur if we fill up all the tanks, but we can worry about that later. As for the second loop, I think we might be able to do something like that. Yeah, look at that. That is plenty of radiant pipes and we can use the previous routing for the insulated pipe there. To build all of this, we're gonna need a couple of ladders and that should be it. Let's let the duplicants do some building. Oh, before I forget, I also installed a power transformer here. All we need to do is hook this up to our previous line here. And then we can use a normal wire to power everything up. This shouldn't take that much. I believe they only take 10 watts here and then the 240 watts. This is a really cheap contraption if we can use... No expensive aqua tuner set up for this one, hopefully. Looks like we just achieved a vacuum here. Let's deconstruct the pump. And I guess all we have to do now is hook up the hydrogen, which we have in here. Oh no, there's a little bit of oxygen in there as well. Let's still hook it up, see what happens. If we... Yeah, there it is. Little bastard. So I guess we're just gonna cut this open and then empty this pipe. In the meantime, hydrogen is already entering the room and filling it up quickly. Thank you, Otto. Very generous of you. Let's let the hydrogen flow. We're just gonna fill the entirety of the room up with the hydrogen we actually measured and then the rest we're gonna fill up with carbon dioxide, hopefully cover up the plants. It should function well enough, let's hope for the best. We can also get back the shearing station there, out of obsidian of course. And with the hydrogen out of the tanks we will also be able to disconnect them. Another thing we can actually already do is also pump out this room. I'm just gonna set up two pumps to make it a tiny bit quicker. Have a gas vent here and then we are just gonna power this up in any way, shape or form. As a matter of fact, in the future we're probably gonna route the cable like this into this pump. Gonna need some scaffolding for this. Also, also wallpaper. Do not forget about the wallpaper. I wanna seal this room off. Though thinking about it, a couple of temp shift plates might do us a favor towards the bottom, so I'm gonna set those up. We do not really have nice materials. I think I'm gonna go with gold for this one, because I'm pretty sure we're gonna find a gold volcano on another planetoid. However, that means we'll also have to craft some more gold. Great, we're starting to pump things out. I'm gonna replace everything in here with carbon dioxide. But before we do that, we need to seal off the steam room, that is for sure. And before we do that, we need to craft some more gold. Though, admittedly, this kind of looks strange for something that is not necessary. You know what? I'm gonna save myself the trouble. The temp shift plates in this room aren't really necessary since we cover everything anyways. And the most significant cooling we'll have to do is gonna be here at the bottom. And we have five pipes just doing that. Sometimes when I'm on the edge of a decision, aesthetics can be the deciding factor. I'm routing a pipe for the carbon dioxide already into the room in preparation for when this is done. Okay, nice. Looks like we're almost done here with the vacuum. Yeah, at this rate we can already deconstruct this pump, get rid of everything in this room we don't want anymore. And then we just have to sweep things up and complete this wall. Let's already do it up to here. Sweep up with priority of 9 and complete the wall. After that we're pretty much safe to go slow again. There's just one thing I forgot. After making the loop we wanna get back into here and hop over with a bridge. Though this is gonna be a problem because the cooling loop doesn't have priority. With this loop here, they are alternating when they income. But here the cooling loop would get totally stuck if we had liquid incoming. 
Okay, I'm gonna find a better solution for this eventually, but right now I want to reroute this slightly. So we actually go up here, set up the bridge in this place, and then we just need to go down and meet with this guy, right? Uh, I'm gonna first let them complete the build there. Also, now we can close up the room. I'm just making sure that everything is still hooked up. All the pipes are in order. That means seal this off entirely. Okay, now we come back from our loop, hop over here. And if we go down, these two pipes are gonna alternate. So theoretically, I could be sneaky. Don't do this, but we could just take another bridge and hop over here. It's gonna be the same thing, but use less space. Okay, I kind of like that. Now I believe we can already go ahead and put this to the test. At least get the initial loop going. And then we'll have to think what we do about the output and a potential overflow that could happen. Well, so far so good. I believe the contraption is completed now. We have all the wallpaper here. I built it out of salt in this chamber and I also filled it up with the promised carbon dioxide. We can now theoretically close this off, remove the liquid lock, but I'm gonna observe it for a couple of cycles if it does what intended. And also we should now slowly but surely fill up here the carbon dioxide. Actually incubation is only at 63%, so we have a couple of cycles left. But still, I kind of would like to complete it in today's episode, so we are already gonna connect this and start to fill up the bottom two rows with carbon dioxide. Before the glossy dreadlet hatched. We still have seven cycles left until the cool steam vent actually does its thing. Until then, I think this pipe is a little bit in the way. I'm gonna remove that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're gonna change up the entirety of the system, shipping in the liquids. You can see the carbon dioxide now is slowly distributing. Every now and then, we're gonna get a narrow window where there's no overpressure and just in due time the bottom two rows should be filled up with carbon dioxide. In the meantime, let's decide on what's an agreeable temperature. I would say approximately 20 degrees is good. So for the cold liquids, if we are above 20 degrees, then we want to start pumping things out. That means below 20 degrees, we want to open up the liquid shutoff and make it go into the loop. So we can copy over the settings for this thermo sensor. However, the thermo sensor for the steam vent also needs to be 20, but we want to measure below 20 to send the green signal. We also want liquids above 500 kilograms approximately. Maybe I'm gonna play around with that a little bit, but if both of these conditions are true, then we are gonna activate the pump. And with that out of the way, we only need to store the liquids. Now I'm gonna do this temporarily because I'm not sure how I want to do this exactly. So this is what it's gonna be. I'm gonna get started with about five reservoirs for each of the liquids. Once we know exactly where we want to store these guys, I'm gonna move all the liquids. For now, I'm just gonna attempt to protect it a little bit from the environment. But generally, liquid that is inside of a tank doesn't heat up or cool down this quickly. You know, as a matter of fact, it would be nice to have these guys in a vacuum. So I'm also gonna set up a liquid lock for this guy. By doing something like this, we can hop in here, cover this up. We will then be able to pump out the room. Maybe let's get rid of a reservoir here so we can do two pumps. Get those guys out of there. Gas vent here. Little bit of power, not quite hooked up yet. There you go. And then we already have a room to store our liquids, though I highly doubt I'm gonna keep this for long. As soon as I have a better understanding of the overall layout of the mega base, then that's where I'm gonna move my liquids. Whoa, I was just about to finish the liquid storage here and realized the cool steam vent already went off. It is now in its active cycle. I thought it's gonna take a little bit longer. In this case, we might want to get started by hooking these guys up here. That means both of the liquids are gonna be incoming. Let's see how they actually behave. We're gonna go through both reservoirs. Okay, and now hold the phone. Did I forget to connect this? Ah, there we go, okay. It's currently sitting at around 10 degrees, so it's going through the shutoff and then it's gonna cool down the steam, as you can see. And it's immediately being converted into normal water. That is good. In the meantime, we have reached a temperature of 80 degrees. Hmm. Yeah, I think we have to do this a little bit differently. What I would like to achieve is always have a little bit of liquid inside of the tanks before we actually release it. The easiest way to do it would have been with a mechanized airlock, just like we did over here. However, this is not convenient. At least not anymore, unless we want to move everything one block up. I don't really mind the brine heating up this much. However, we need a little bit of cold liquid inside of the tank so the temperatures can even themselves out until they are at 20 degrees. 
Man, this is gonna be a huge eyesore, I believe. But I want to do it. I need to do it. It is gonna be the easier solution. If I move everything up, then it's not gonna be even on the top either. So let's try the mechanized airlock thing. Okay, got most of the airlocks in place. Let's decide on the thresholds. I'm gonna go with 80%. Ah, let's do about 60% full and 30% empty. Yeah, that uh, probably feels right for all of these guys and they're gonna be connected directly to the door. So both of them are gonna be filled up at least by 30%. Okay, I think we got it set up. That means we can also hook it up again. And now at least the first tank should be filled up with nice and cold water. This means we're also ready to hook up the storage system finally and everything is hopefully gonna work. I'm sure we'll still have to do some tweaking, but the general system is in place. Also, we achieved a vacuum here. Great. That means taking apart the pump and we can get the rest of the liquid reservoirs in the joint. You know what? We could actually set both to 50. Does that make sense? I guess the door would open and close much more frequently, which doesn't matter since we don't use the power for it. Okay, I see the problem now. If we continuously get new water, eventually we're gonna fill these up and the cycle cannot continue. So we also have to prevent some of the new water from entering. I think we could easily do this here on the top once I remove the liquid lock. Do we need to get inside of here again? I don't think so, at least not right now. Now the liquids continue in the second tank and soon enough they can join the loop. Now this is closed off, which means I'm gonna remove all of this and the water can just dribble down here that's fine instead of having these guys around i would like to see some more shutoffs one goes here another one there we're gonna power them with the wire here easy and then all we have to do is send a signal from the tanks oh my gosh <laughs> do not worry i have a backup plan let me just uh, re-establish that liquid lock <laughs> Right, slowly but surely, I think it is starting to work. We just have to do a little bit of cabling here. Come on. And now both of the liquid shutoffs are activated because the threshold isn't reached yet. But I think I still want a little bit of a difference here. We're gonna go 40%, 60%. Copy those settings and copy them over. Now we also want to make sure we pick everything up and then we're gonna close this off again because it's hanging by a thread. 34.8 grams of water are preventing gases from exchanging here. But now we can also see this is cooling down. Let's check the temperature here. 93 to 91, 90. Yeah, that is definitely doing something here. And at the same time, we're coming out here at around 36 degrees with the brine. And since this is now going into the reservoir and keeps the reservoir full, this shutoff has terminated throughput. Yeah, this is gonna solve all of our problems. The tanks are always gonna be between 40 and 60% and we will always have something flowing here. Also, just in case for the downtimes of the geysers, we are not actually using up the water entirely. The only problem could be that we are not quite as efficient in using everything up. Maybe we're producing more liquids than we are currently utilizing this way. And so that will be another thing to consider. Last mechanized airlock also shut down and therefore polluted water is flowing. Now, as you can see here, the temperature is going up evenly and slowly, which means as soon as we have reached the 20 degrees, we are going to finally store it in our storage tank. And so this can always continue. This guy can probably go as long as it wants. And then we are just waiting for the water here to cool down to also 20 degrees. Now, 20 degrees might be a little arrogant. Maybe we're going to set this to 40 degrees or so. I think for now we can just leave this running. This should be good. We're already down to 60 degrees with the water. More steam is gonna come out of this thing. Let's revisit this the next time. Also up here, looks like we have a nice distribution of hydrogen and carbon dioxide. There's just a tiny amount left here. Maybe we can leave the pump running just for a few seconds and that is gonna help bring this hydrogen down even more. Uh, where's my egg? Ah, okay, it's up here. Oh man, we already have the first glossy draglet. Great! Let's remove this pump, replace the shearing station, and I'm gonna be a happy man. But yeah, with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye!